Hello, card warriors. Today I'm going to be talking about the deck that is on everyone's mind, Vegito. Specifically, I want to talk about what I think are the true underlying problems with the Vegito deck. Now, this isn't to say that I don't think that the interaction of Gohan, Reunification, and Vegito don't have some issues in terms of balance, but given how imbalanced the game is as a whole, I'm not certain that those three cards by themselves are toxic enough to actually merit a ban, or even merit changing. And I'm going to explain that position, and that's going to sound very controversial. However, what I don't want to assert, and I don't want people to confuse, is I am not saying that Vegito as a deck isn't extremely cancerous or toxic. It is both of those things, and very much so. What I want to highlight, though, is that I think a particular other subset of cards are causing the issues, and that those are the actual underlying issue that's causing this to be broken. And I'll explain that in a few other ways. So, using comparable games such as Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering, and looking at the mechanics that they have, they have a certain idea of what something should cost as far as what benefit it gives you. There are no real cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! that just let you draw two for free. You have to have some specific type of equip on the field, you have to have some specific archetype, or you have to pay some specific cost. Usually you don't net cards, and even when you do, it's usually something very specific and a niche of a particular deck. And a lot of times, like, your card advantage just goes directly to the board, not to your hand. Hand card advantage is far more important and far more powerful than board hand advantage, or, or board advantage, typically, in most games as well. So when you're talking about games like Magic the Gathering, they have cards that let you draw, but those cards are typically costed at about 3 mana for a draw 2. Now, as you're looking at Dragon Ball Card Warriors, you'll notice that there are a lot of cards that allow you to draw that are very cheap. So you have balanced ones, like Mom's the Boss, which says, draw one card, afterwards return a card from your hand to the deck. This card is actually extremely well balanced at zero, because it actually is a net minus one from hand, because you have to spend both this card and a card that you're returning back to your deck in order to get that other card that you're drawing from deck. So this card itself is not a problem, and it's not even really broken in Vegito decks, even though it is a zero-cost event card. However, it's when you get into the one energy cards that you really start to see an issue because there are too many of them. This is draw a character card with a cost of two or less. If there are none, draw another card. So this is essentially just one energy, draw any card from your deck, unless you have a character card that costs two or less, which the Vegito deck doesn't, except for Frog. So because this doesn't have a drawback of, of limiting you to having to draw a card that is a character that costs two or less, and you just get to draw anyway if you're out, this actually has no drawbacks for the Vegito deck, and the Vegito deck could run this and have absolutely no issues with it because it's an event card that costs one that completely filters itself. And it gets worse because now you have send one card from your hand back to your deck, draw two. This is even better filtration, and one of the issues that Dragon Ball Card Warriors has against other games is that you have a really, really tiny deck size. 25 cards is the smallest constructed deck size I've ever seen in a TCG like this. So when you're talking about this small of a deck size with having as many as three copies of any given card in your deck, getting your pieces is very, very easy in a game if you have a lot of filtration with such a small deck size and that many copies. So when you're talking about cards like this, even though this is a net zero and not broken, it's still a problem because you have so many cards that do this. So yet again, we have another draw a card that's a character with a cost of seven or more. If there are none, draw any card from your deck at random. In this case, we have a specific card that says draw any event card with a cost of three or less. If there are none, draw one other card. And this is when we start to get into the actual broken ones. But just keep in mind that you can run three copies of these cards, and with this, you could literally just draw your entire deck. And that is actually very, very stupid. And I think that this is the underlying problem that Vegito has. And I'm going to get more onto that after I discuss how stupid these cards are. Draw a card. If the card is one or less in cost, draw another card. So there is an incentive already for Vegito to run a bunch of one-cost event cards. This card, in and of itself, allows you to get a plus one. The problem with Vegito getting plus one is that the deck normally should be functioning. Like If Vegito didn't have all of these draw cards then you have to spend an event card from hand 
and that card is gone in order to get the cost reduction on Gohan. If you actually had to have five cards that are in your graveyard that all had a cost to them, and then that's what reduced Gohan's cost, and they did not replace themselves immediately, Gohan wouldn't be broken, and the Gohan reunification combo wouldn't be broken. And as a consequence, since Vegito is already not a broken card, the entire combo would be fine. Now, obviously, you're going to have to have some type of early draw, and I get that. But because there's so, so many early draws, and they're all cost one, I think that that's one of the most fundamental issues with the deck. This card is also just as ridiculous. Because decks are so event cost heavy, the average Vegito deck running maybe 19 or 20, this is an 80% chance for a draw two. An 80% chance to just get that plus one for one cost. If you were to compare this card to, say, Magic the Gathering, this cost would have to be two more energy at least. If you were to compare this to Yu-Gi-Oh!, this would just be outright banned. If there was a card in Yu-Gi-Oh! that was just draw a card, if it's a spell, draw another one, that would be incredibly busted. So, it, you have to understand, like, when you're talking about the dynamics between the different card games, no other card game gives you this much early draw, and I honestly think that this is honestly unhealthy for the game. So, just to keep going, this is another specific draw card. This is draw a Gohan if you don't have one, get another card, which I don't mind there being a one-cost searcher like this, but I feel like it just needs to be draw one Gohan. And if there are none, do nothing. And I think that would be fine, but the problem is now that you now have all of these one-cost draw twos, all of these one-cost filters, and now this card just lets you get out your win condition as well. So this means that you effectively have six copies in your tiny 25-card deck, of your Gohan, and you're doing all of this filtration, and you have direct searchers too. So at what point do you actually fail to miss Gohan? You can't. So the problem, again, that I'm asserting is that the Vegito deck's consistency is being aided too much by these cheap draw cards, and not necessarily that any of the individual pieces are broken, or even that they're broken in tandem. Only with this fourth piece of the puzzle, all of these cheap event cards that draw. And here we go with another one. Draw a card if it's a Majin Buu, draw one more. Draw a card if it's a Goku, draw one more. So we're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cards that are one or less that give you filtration. Most of them replace themselves. All but one of them replace themselves. Some of them give you a specific search for Gohan. And if any of them do not have the requisite cards that you would need in order to actually fulfill what they're supposed to be pulling... Then you just get the card from your, uh, you just get a card from your deck for free. So when you're talking about how Vegito is broken, when they have the ability to honestly pick and choose which one of these they think work best for their own deck, and just honestly get away with having that particular type of flexibility, they can just go through their entire deck in a very small amount of turns. And this is where I want to highlight why I think this is the actual problem. So with reunification. Other than a particular card that says draw an event card that costs three or less, which that's your entire deck for the most part, Reunification doesn't have a mechanism for you to search it out of your deck. The only way you're drawing into Reunification with Vegito is specifically if you are filtering through so much of your deck that you reach it. And these people are reaching two of them consistently by turn four or turn five. And this is the real problem with the deck. If Reunification had to be buried within your deck like any other normal card and you didn't have all of these mechanisms to just draw your whole deck then you would never get the second reunification you'd have to luck into the getting the first one which honestly you'd see the first one fairly regularly if you didn't have all of that draw power but you would not be seeing the second one super commonly and getting the third one would just be unheard of like it would happen maybe one in 50 games so the consistency of the vegeto deck is tied entirely to these one cost event cards and not so much with the individual pieces that make the combo work. Now, I understand that my saying that getting rid of the one-cost cards is, you know, that, that would be my suggestion for the game, but I know it's not feasible, because what do you do with the cards that already exist? Some of them are higher rarity, and there's no real way to come back from fixing that. So I understand that the Dragon Ball Card Warriors team, not that they care, but if they did care, they would not have the reasonable ability to roll back what these cards do and completely alter them to get rid of how cancerous early drawing is in the game. But you still have that underlying issue that that initial imbalance that the game was created with, because all of these are set one cards, just completely enable such, stupid, su such stupidity. 
So when you're talking about um, any other deck that has, say, let's just say there was five energy, deal 10k damage, and you need to draw three of those. You could just play a deck just like this, all very cheap, one-cost event cards with a few removal cards here and there, and just draw your whole deck, get the three of them in your hand, break your bank, go face. And then you just win. And that type of draw power is just really, really stupid. So the fact is, it's very likely something like that is going to exist next set. That Spirit Bomb card seems to be some type of big burn anyway. And if we get more burn um, event cards, that could very easily transition to Vegito um, potentially even being kicked by the wayside because it has so many responses and answers. So moving on, I did want to address... I also understand that even if the one cost cards were removed, Heaven's Gaze is still a card, and Heaven's Gaze still gives you all of that filtration. However, its cost of three means that it's not coming out until turn three. They're not breaking bank to play a card like this, and even though it will fix all of their issues long term, it means that they're not going to get that Vegito out on turn five short term. And I understand that people are getting Vegito out on turn two if they get really lucky, turn four typically. But, like... This would honestly slow things down, even though it is a better filtration card and a better card uh, for drawing in general. But um, another facet is that because the deck runs so many event cards, and the game is event heavy, we do have that SP deck. So when you have cards like Fight for Earth, that can bring an SP card out that has an effect that will typically hurt something on the board. And then it also comes out with Swift Attack and then can kill something else then you now have this event card that both doubles as an early board presence and also doubles as removal. And that gives the Vegito deck even more that they could potentially do uh, in the long run with event cards. So one of the issues right now is that event cards are so overtuned that people are playing fewer and fewer decks that have a lot of creatures. And I do think that that's another issue that needs to be addressed because right now removal is so cheap in any given deck that you have like three cost, kill any Saiyan, and then you gain a bank. And when you're talking about going against Vegito, like they had to, you know, go through half of their deck and then plop that thing out on turn three. And then you just like hit it with a three mana card and it's gone. And it's eight. So you have this other issue where the reason why people are running these all event decks is because event cards can't be responded to by your opponent, whereas the creatures that get put on the board can. And the reason why Vegito is so popular is because it gets rid of your opponent's answers. Now, I personally have a very, very high win rate against Vegito. I don't think the deck itself is broken to the point where I think it would have a 50% win rate in tournaments. So, if you're talking about a deck that has a sub-50% win rate, that means that it's going to have other issues involved um, if you're talking about whether or not that deck needs to be hit. So, if you're talking about Hearthstone, and this was talking about, say, a tournament setting... Vegeta wouldn't be banned. Vegeta wouldn't be hit. Vegeta wouldn't be nerfed. It might actually be buffed. And that sounds crazy. But if you look at its actual win rate against other decks that are fully fleshed out, it loses. And it loses very consistently. So if you're talking about androids, if someone is playing, say, my android deck, then you're going to have someone who has so many answers and so much card draw that there's really nothing that the Vegeta player is going to be able to do. So my deck is a little bit more top-heavy than most Android decks because I don't focus on getting uh, this combo out early. I focus on just playing an early 17, letting them kill it, and then drawing a bunch of cards. So I have three exoskeletons, move something back, draw three new cards, filter out, play uh, Android 20, get two more cards. And then by the time they actually go to remove my hand, then I will have answers. Now, even if they remove, say, two of my answers out of the four cards they snipe, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, let me see, seven, eight different answers, and these can be brought out from the deck regardless, even without needing to be in my hand. So, I don't think that Vegito as a deck is problematic if we're talking about high-end, competitive, everyone has full decks type of ordeal. But the problem is that if you're talking about a standard Vegito deck, you have... Oh, I'm lagging a little bit. Hello, mouse, are you there? There we go. If you're talking about a standard Vegito Turbo deck, the problem that you have is common, common, rare, common, rare, common, common, rare, common. Now, I happen to be running legendaries in mine. You don't need this card in a Vegito deck to make it work. Super rare. Now, the only card that you need that is over a rare 
are the three Gohans. If you're talking about your extra deck, common, rare, 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 rare. So the problem with the Vegito deck isn't even necessarily how cancerous it is. The problem is how accessible it is. And what I mean by accessible is it, t it costs so few card points to build this in comparison to a deck that would take, say, Father, Son, Gohan, which is, I believe, 4,500. So Father, Son, Gohan may be about as expensive to make a single copy of, and it is a staple two of in every single Saiyan deck. It is about as expensive to make one copy of this card as it is to build the rest of the Vegito deck, less expensive after you've got, bought a few packs and you're getting a few of those commons and rares here and there. That doesn't mean that Vegito can't be aided with uh, some super rare or legendary support cards like what I chose to do with uh, Battle for the Earth. But when you're talking about, or Fight for the Earth, what you're talking about is a deck that is so accessible that anyone with minimal resources can just go straight in and build this deck instantly. A lot of these are core cards too, which means you don't even have to purchase them. And when you're talking about having a deck that is that cheap, the real issue is that everyone is going to be running it. And the problem that the game has is that this deck is not fun to play against. And I get that it's not fun to play against. In many, many card games, there are many, many decks that are super not fun to play against. But the problem then exists that if you have these decks and they're common, cheap, easy to build, and not only that, here's another core facet, they're extremely quick. You now have this problem where you have these people who are running the ladder. They have seen that this deck is dominant. They have seen that newer players can't do anything against it, and it can still steal wins from the better players on occasion. Or if they're playing a deck that doesn't have a counter built into it, then they're going to lose just from having the bad matchup. So you're talking about these players who are getting, say, 55-60% win rates with these Vegito decks. And when they're getting 55-60% to 60 win rates with their Vegito decks, and they're climbing the ladder and the deck is inexpensive, other people are either going to quit they're going to find an answer for it, or they're going to build the same deck. And when someone sees the same deck a lot on any given metagame and any given competitive card game, typically what happens is people build the deck. So if you're talking about, say, a Yu-Gi-Oh! example, um, I personally hated Six Samurai. I know a lot of people played Six Samurai, and it was a deck that was extremely popular. I didn't like it, and I saw a lot of other people playing it. Um... And that's just something that normally happens. Um, there are other, you know, examples of other decks throughout various points in time. Uh, for Card Fight Vanguard, I know Revengers was super popular in Set 12. Um, there's just so many examples of meta decks that have really, really, really high representation. But with a game like this, where honestly, if you're playing computer and you try and purchase card packs and it just completely shuts you out of the game then you have this new issue where you can't get those cards. So all of the decks that I have that counter Vegito very heavily, like I have 80% win rates with, say, my Android deck, if you actually look at the rarity, there's a legendary, there's two legendaries, there's two legendaries, there's two legendaries, there's a legendary, there's a legendary. That's nine legendaries. Each of them are a minimum of 3,000 card points, which is the cost of the entire Vegito deck for each one. And that itself is creating a new dynamic where now people are disincentivized from playing things other than Vegito because the answers to Vegito are very, very expensive. So I know that Saiyan decks, if they're going to beat Vegito, which I don't think Saiyan decks have the best matchup to Vegito, but when they do when they do beat Vegito, it's because of Father, Son, Gohan being a free summon from the SP deck. So when you use that card, it comes out, it kills a thing on the board, now it's 15-15, and they have to deal with that. It's... A good answer it's absolutely a good answer but what do you do when the cost of a single card is worth the same amount as the cost of the entire other deck so i'm rambling a little bit about that point and i'd like to move on from that so at the end of the day um well actually let me cover one more thing real quick so with a vegeto deck one thing that i want to note is that other games have cards that are exactly like gohan and other games have effects that are like reunification so that doesn't indicate that the card combination has to be intrinsically broken. Um, there's an example of this with Hearthstone, which was uh, Evolved Shaman. So Evolved Shaman had a card called Nerubian something or other that was a six mana 4-4. Four, four. And then its cost was reduced by one, I think, every single turn. Or maybe it was for every single totem you played. One of those two. 
But either way, you could eventually get this card down to being a 2 cost, a 1 cost, a 0 cost over the course of the game without too many issues. So then you would play it, and then you play this card called Evolve. And what Evolve did was it took your minion, that was 6 costs, and transformed it into a random minion of a higher cost. And that would turn it into a 7 cost card. And obviously this card was cheated out earlier, and then you were able to use Evolve on it to make it bigger. And while there was an element of randomness with it, you still typically got a monster that was much, much more expensive than the mana cost that you invested in playing it. And I don't think that those types of combos are intrinsically bad. If Gohan was not a turn 3 zero energy card, I don't think there would be that big of a problem with reunification being used on it and with its cost reduction. But the issue right now is that you have all of those cheap early draw cards that let you get everything out of your deck and also make Gohan zero energy very, very quick. Like, turn two is not unheard of, turn three is common, turn four is super common. And that's ridiculous. And it really seems to me that the combination of Vegito, Gohan, and Reunification in and of themselves is not problematic without the event cards. If you remove the event cards from the equation and replace them with any other event cards that do not draw, all of a sudden the deck is super slow and it's not going to work. If you have to play character cards that get you draws, then that's still slowing down the overall tempo of the deck and that's going to tune it back into when you actually get Vegito out. Because the speed at which Vegito gets out is neither the fault of Gohan nor Reunification. It is entirely the fault of all of these one-cost and zero-cost event cards that filter your deck and replace themselves. And it is honestly the replacing themselves that is the problem, because the only way that you can get Vegito out is if you have a three-card hand, specifically Gohan, Gohan, Reunification. And when you need a three-card hand to get something out, if you're giving up other cards to set up that combo, then you're not going to have the cards to actually go in with the combo. So I've seen people uh, make the mistake, in my opinion, mistake, of playing the zero-cost heal-a-little-bit card. That's just like zero, uh, heal two. If you can reference purple, heal five more. I don't think that's a good decision, because you're essentially just taking a card out of your hand and if that card was any other card, like say just a random other draw one, doesn't matter what it is, then you would still be replacing it and you're typically not going to need the heal because your deck is supposed to be a fast deck. I could see someone making the argument that maybe you're up against a Videl Rush deck where they're just playing like three Videls, three 17s, three 18s, and they just try and get an early board quick and try and win with their overstatedness for their levels. But I don't think that that's meta enough, and I don't think it's going to win you a lot of games in the long run to try and account for that. I think it's just better to go for the turbo if you're trying to go for the turbo. Now, that being said, I do think that there are Vegito decks that are pretty strong, and that would actually give my decks a run for their money, but those are decks that would uh, use a lot of early control cards and have other bigger statted units to just drop in the board. And then after a certain amount of time has passed in the game, after they've removed your other bigger statted minions, then you drop the double or triple Vegito, and then they just lose all of their hand, and then you just swing for game next turn by waiting until they're guaranteed to have zero cards in hand much later in the game to actually go in. Of course, the problem with those Vegito decks is that they lose to the fast Vegito decks. So there's a little bit of rock, paper, scissors, but that's very common in card games. Anyway, this is my first in-depth analysis on Dragon Ball Card Warriors. I hope you liked it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree as to what the actual problems with the Vegito Turbo deck are, but I've been very consistent from day one that the two big issues are that the deck is too cheap, as in too easily accessible for new players, and that the deck is honestly too fast in virtue of those one-cost event cards. And those one-cost event cards... Uh, the common counter-arguments that are made against me are that the one-cost event cards were not broken prior to Vegito. But I can give you examples of perfectly reasonable cards that could come to exist that would easily make those cards ridiculously overpowered. And like I mentioned, um, if you have, say, a Spirit Bomb card that is 1,000 damage to the opponent's leader, deals 1,000 more damage for every event card in your, drops, or in your graveyard, that would be ridiculously broken and super easy to just... OTK with. You get two of those and you win. Um, there could be other such things that would also uh, make it broken if there was any type of just really, really powerful effect 
that you just need to draw that one card and then you win. And that's why having one card insulated combos is already pretty bad. But then when you're talking about having such a small deck size and being able to draw all of that deck size, it creates this toxic dynamic that gives you way too much consistency. Because one of the things that makes card games fun is when you have that element of luck of the draw, when you have the ability to get a bad hand, and in getting that bad hand, obviously you optimize so that it happens infrequently, but when you get that bad hand, you're like, yeah, that happens sometimes. Or when you get really, really lucky, you're like, oh, that was really fun. And that inherent variance is part of what makes card games enjoyable. When you have decks like this Turbo Vegito, it just takes the complete element of chance out of it. It's almost statistically impossible to not have a Vegito turn four. It's almost statistically impossible. And with that, I think I'm going to call this one for now. Uh, please feel free to flame me in the Discord. I am looking forward to it. Thank you, and have a good one.